Hello, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the FLEX program training. I am Ashley O'Donnell, Clinical Quality Consultant for the Iowa Healthcare Collaborative Compass Program. And I'm Lana Comstock, Clinical Quality Consultant for the Collaborative Compass Program as well. Today, we are gathering to provide you a training on the FLEX program. Essentially, following the initial survey of the critical access hospitals that we received, we identified that those of you participating in the FLEX program through the Iowa Healthcare Collaborative have identified trends and the request for a better understanding of the emergency department and outpatient measures. So today we're gonna to provide information that will aid new quality professionals in basic understanding while reinforcing the details of each measure for those of you who have been in your role for a period of time. The National Quality Forum endorses measures that hospitals use to evaluate communication for transition of care during emergency department transfers. These are referred to as EDTC, or Emergency Department Transfer Communication Measures. These measures are a part of the Me Medicare Beneficiary Quality Improvement Project, or MBQIP program, which is also a part of HRSA. And HRSA stands for Health Resources and Services Administration. This HRSA funding ultimately comes from the Office of Rural Health Policy, Medicare Rural Hospital Flexibility Program, or what we refer to as the FLEX program. So it's no wonder with all these acronyms that it creates some confusion on the FLEX program and the MBQIP measures. The EDTC measures are relevant for every hospital. However, when we think about rural hospitals, emergency depart department transfer communications are particularly important because of the distance between the critical access hospital and the urban tertiary centers, making effective triage, stabilization, and transfer of patients is a crucial necessity to assure appropriate information of life or death importance. The EDTC measures originated in 2004 and they were developed by Stratus Health in conjunction with the University of Minnesota Rural Health Research Center. In 2018, there was a technical expert panel formed to review the measures, and they were asked to make recommendations to modernize and streamline the measures. This resulted in the updates of the measures, which are now in effect for 2020. You can be, view the details of the updates in the EDTC technical brief on the Stratus Health website. And at this time, I'm going to utilize the elements from that brief to inform the audience of the primary recommendations. The technical expert panel recommended significantly streamlining and updating to modernize the EDTC measures. They included reducing the overall number of measure elements to reflect the highest priority items and eliminate the submeasure structure. So the total number of data elements were actually reduced from 27 to eight. Essentially, there were 16 elements that were removed and there were two that were combined. There were revised names, descriptions, and specifications for the remaining data elements to improve clarity. And then additionally, there were changes to the population and the definition of scent. And so this is important. The scent includes confirming the inclusion of long-term care and nursing home transfers. It did remove the patients under observation status. And lastly, it updated and clarified language regarding communication via the electronic health record or health information exchange to focus on immediacy of data, data that was available. In addition to reviewing the EDTC measures, we wanted to take the opportunity to let you know that the Emergency Department 2 measure is now retired. And as a reminder, the ED2 measure was the admin decision time to the Emergency Department time for admitted patients. So again, review, in review of this slide, we want to uh, illustrate the measures that were actually removed again. And that was the ED2 inpatient ED measures. And essentially that was removed by CMS um, after submission of quarter four of 2019 data. So that would be the last moment of reporting for that measure. Now we're gonna go into a little bit more detail and review the EDTC measures 
and provide what the rationale was or the evidence that was supported for removal. So under number two here, administrative communication, this is the nurse to nurse and physician to physician communication. And these were elements that were actually removed. And the rationale for that really was that there was evidence that was supporting that this pre-transfer communication was happening regularly. And so documentation of the process didn't uh, add any value. So that was a win for us to not have to document that any further. Number three is patient information. And there were six elements that were actually removed. And that included name, address, age, gender, uh, and the significant other's contact information as well as insurance. That was again removed because Again, communication of this was regularly occurring and documentation uh, of the measure was not value added. Then we'll take a look at the fourth element that was removed, which was vital signs, and the five elements, the pulse, respirators, blood pressure, temp, and oxygen saturation. All of those were removed because they, again, were being communicated, um, and additionally, it was identified to be a data collection burden. And with that being said, uh, the modification uh, of vital signs did include neurological status being modified, and that's kept in the mental health uh, or mental status orientation section. The nurse generated information um, is number five, and there were four elements there that were removed, which were catheter, immobilization, respiratory support, and oral limitations. Again, those were routinely being communicated. We have good processes in place. And um, it's important for you to recognize that specifically catheter and oral limitation, as well as immobilizations, um, really are included in the in assessment. And so with intervention and response, that's where that section will, will be falling. And lastly, looking at sensory status being modified and it's being included in the mental status orientation section as well. EBTC measures fall under the umbrella of care transitions for the ambiquit measures in the FLEX program. There's one composite measure and there are eight elements within the EBTC measures. Ultimately, the goals of the EBTC transfer uh, measures are to assess how well key patient information is being communicated from the emergency department to any healthcare facility. Emergency department transfer communication details here. So taking a look at one through four, medications administered in the emergency department, allergies, home medications, and the provider note are considered the key aspects of care coordination. In, in number five, mental status and orientation, well, it's really important to note that the functional and cognitive status changes are recognized as best and earliest indicators of any deterioration in a patient, and they are the key aspects of assessment and care coordination. This measure is a combination of the two former measures of neurological status and sensory status or impairment. And lastly, looking at number six through eight, the reason for transfer and or plan of care, the tests and procedures that were done, and the tests and procedures that were sent are, again, all considered key aspects of care coordination. Ultimately, remembering these elements that are the key components in care coordination will assist your hospital in the work that you do, crossing over into all of the care coordination and elements that you have in place. For data tracking for EBTC, you can track your data using this Excel document, and it does come from Stratus Health website. This uh, is frequently um, assigned for data tracking to the emergency department manager or the lead nurses in the ED. Ultimately, using this tracker is a nice way to trend and monitor and a nice tool to maintain over time so you can look back and have a reference. And it will also assist the data entry persons in making sure they're getting all the elements 
um, identified and communicated. We wanted to share that we have a new URL for the Compass Data Portal. Currently, the old URL auto links to the new URL, and this linkage will be short term. So please plan to save it into your favorites, and you can see the URL here listed. When we talk about data entry into the data portal for Compass, um, this is just a sample of what that looks like for you. And we have been providing that from the Iowa Healthcare Collaborative. This data portal has been in place for years for uh, just a convenience to our hospital uh, da data entry people. It does reduce um, having to go to another um, area for data collection. All the measures are updated for the 2020 uh, new measures for EDTC. And remember that you can pull the REN chart from the Iowa Healthcare Collabor Collaborative data portal. And here's just a sample of that um, looking at the EDTC. You can abstract all of your emergency department cases and report them. However, we typically do just ask you to report the minimum measure. This just simplifies things for our critical access hospitals. And the minimum expectation for the EDTC measure is that there are 45 per quarter. And some best practices that we have seen throughout Compass data uh, collection is just that um, you're pulling 15 charts and reporting those on a monthly basis to meet the minimum measure of 45 per quarter. And um, the other thing I mentioned earlier was that really having the emergency department manager engage in pulling the data really helps with an immediate identification of any areas of opportunity or any recognition of overall improvements, thus allowing for planning and follow-up as warranted. I want to just mention that Stratus Health, seen here is their web link at the bottom of this slide, does have a frequently asked questions document that you can answer, that has answers for additional questions, and you might want to take a look at that. And so, again, that resource is listed here. This is just a snippet to show you um, how the visual of the EDTC flows. So the data. Uh, here does represent just a multitude of partners who are involved in data flow. The bottom line for you, once you enter your data, is that um, you have two options for viewing. The first one was the run chart that we looked at on the prior slide. And the other is that IHC will be sending out reports to you, and we've developed some new reports for all of the MBQIP measures, which would be user-friendly. All right, thank you, Lana, for the great review on EDTC measures and information. As mentioned in the beginning, one area that was identified in the survey as an area hospitals needed assistance with was the outpatient measures. I'm gonna take this opportunity to walk through each measure and what specifications are identified. Outpatient is one of the four reporting domains for MBQIP. Gathering this data is intended to focus on quality improvement for outpatient hospital services and is submitted through CART, which is part of QualityNet. If anyone is looking for some specific education on data entry into CART, there are some great modules out there that can help. If anyone is interested, please reach out to myself or Lana, and we will be happy to send you some of those links. So here's a list of the outpatient measures that are particularly part of the MBQIP program, which we will go over each of them in more detail. The first measure we will discuss is OP2, which is looking at fibrolinic therapy received within 30 minutes of arrival. This measure is looking at the percentage of outpatient patients with chest pain or possible heart attack who got drugs to break up blood clots within 30 minutes of arrival. 
The importance behind this measure is that evidence suggests that time to fibrolytic therapy is a strong predictor of outcome in patients with acute myocardial infarction. Nearly two lives per 1,000 patients are lost per hour of delay. National guidelines recommend fibrolytic therapy within 30 minutes of hospital arrival for patients with STEMI. You will also see in this slide the measure population, which helps identify who should be included in this data. Here is a list of the data elements that will need to be identified and included in the data. I will let you read through these on your own, but please do, not, please do note that this measure does not include direct admissions from your ED to your acute care inpatient areas. The second measure we will discuss is OP3, which is looking at the median time to transfer to another facility for acute coronary intervention. This measure is identified by the median number of minutes before outpatients with chest pain or possible heart attack who needed specialized care were transferred to another hospital. The importance behind this measure is that evidence suggests that the early use of primary angioplasty in patients with STEMI results in a significant reduction in mortality and morbidity. The earlier primary coronary intervention is provided, the more effective it is. Current recommendations support a door to balloon time of 90 minutes or less. You again will notice in this slide that the measure population is listed. Here's a list of the data elements for this measure that will need to be identified and included. Again, for this measure, you will note that you will not include direct admissions from your ED to your acute care inpatient areas. The third measure we will discuss is OP18, which is looking at the median time from arrival from ED arrival to ED departure for discharged ED patients. This will identify the average time patients spent in the ED before being sent home. Evidence suggests that reducing the time patients remain in the emergency department can improve access to treatment and increase quality of care, potentially improving access to care specific to the patient condition and increases the capability to provide additional treatment. When EDs are overwhelmed, their ability to respond to community emergencies and, dis and disasters may be compromised. The measure population for this measure is small as it will include all patients seen in a hospital emergency department that have an EM code in Appendix A, which if anyone needs help finding this specific document, please reach out to myself or Lana for assistance. Here's a list of the sample size requirements. You will see that zero to 900 for quarterly data asked to, to submit at least 63 cases. And if you have over 900 to submit at least 96 cases. Lastly is OP22, which is looking at the percentage of patients who left the emergency department before being seen. There is no measure population for this measure as you will include anyone who left prior to being seen. There is a specific numerator and denominator which is listed as the total number of patients who left without being evaluated by a physician or advanced practitioner over the total number of patients who presented to the ED. There are also no data elements for this measure as it will be reported as a number. Of note, here is a list of additional outpatient measures that are available to report if anyone is interested and looking for some more specific information on what these measures are, please reach out and we are happy to help. Similar to Lana's slide, here is a visual of the data flow process for outpatient measures. You will see that the information is submitted through CART or a, a third party vendor if that is what your hospital uses and goes through QualityNet, Telogen, HRSA, IDPH, and then to IHC for dissemination of your reports that you will receive quarterly. All right, and lastly, I've compiled some really great resources that are helpful in data reporting for CART measures, as well as some sites that discuss the overall MBQIP program. You will also continue to receive monthly MBQIP newsletters as well as communication through the office hour calls with Robin Carlson from Stratus Health. 
We want to thank you all for your time today and your efforts to improve quality with the Flex and BeQuip program. Here are the pictures and the information for the IHC Compass team. We look forward to your feedback on how we can improve and please let us know how we can help by reaching out to us by email or phone. And we are looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you.